Now let's see that scene again from a different point of view. The brakes aren't working. <laughs> yeah. Behind every great cartoon character is a great cartoon character voice. <laughs> Long before the fun starts in the cartoon, the fun starts in the voice session, where very talented voice actors gather to speak in the microphones. Mexico? Tomorrow? <laughs> I think Scooby has already won someone's heart. They use their amazing vocal skills to bring the cartoon characters to life. When you work with uh, talented people in the voiceover business, it's always a joy, and this cast is a terrific cast. Uh, we got the, the entire original cast back together, and uh, I just get so charged to see that. I have to tell you, Four, that you're making Scott Gerald's back here weep. <laughs> Four of you are in a room together at the same time. My gosh, he's never going to be the same. <laughs> to actually get to work on something that I drew as a nine-year-old, to do my take on it and uh, and do it the way I grew up with it is, is pretty pretty amazing. I'm really, really lucky uh, for the fact that I get to not only direct them in the recording, but I get to cast them as well. I must have seen 30 people for each character, at least, and we had quite a few characters during this audition session. My name is Castulo Guerra, and I play Senor Fuente. My real name is Maria Canals, and I play Sofia. I play Mr. Smiley, I wonder why. How? Oh, please, you're only encouraging him. Keep it down, we're working. The Let's actors see. act into the microphone. Super! Please follow the green directional arrows. And bring the life to the, to the words created by the writers. Very nice. That's great. Watching the real actors play the character, just uh, at one point you can't separate the character from the actor doing it. And you can't believe that this is coming out of a, an actor. Hola, mis amigos. Welcome to Mexico. Like many of the most recent Scooby-Doo mystery adventures, this one takes place in an exotic locale. Well, this story is a lot of fun because it takes place in Mexico, so there's a lot of adventure and a lot of new characters introduced. My older brother, Luis, manages the cafe with his fiancée, Charlene. Howdy! The food was, like, totally, absolutely delicious. Tostada, quesadillas, and chiladas. Yeah, it's the anticipation of eating the salsa and going to Mexico and eating all the great food. 45A, please, this is take. 49. And? Mm. Well, let's, let's put it in a nutshell. They both enjoy Scooby snacks. Mm. Mm. We try to track down this monster that's terrorizing the city where we live. Did you say a monster? And it's basically the Mexican version of Bigfoot. And he's called the Chupacabra. El Chupacabra! El Chupacabra! El Chupacabra! El Chupacabra. Well, Daphne, I think maybe you better say it. El Chupacabra, which took me four days to learn how to say. Chupacabra. El Chupacabra. What does he smell like? He stinks like three-day-old garbage. Like my Uncle Flaco. He's extremely tall, he has humongous feet. Very similar to our uh, Sasquatch. Disgusting, dirty teeth, never flosses. Zoinks! I think hearing Freddy <laughs> attempt Spanish is, you know, worth the price of the DVD. Oh, well, La Villa Bella is very, very Bella. <laughs> Yeah, very well. Muy, muy complicado story. One of the great things about taking the Scooby-Doo gang to foreign lands is that it lets the storytellers share foreign cultures with the families who watch the video. I think what's most interesting about this is you're discussing the Day of the Dead, which is a big holiday in Latin America. Their Halloween is the one day of the year that the dead get to come back and talk to the living. I am the ghost of Senor Otero. We had decided that we wanted to use Rip Taylor um, immediately. He just fit the role perfectly. This is Rip Taylor doing Scooby-Doo Beware of web, uh, web for, uh, Bigfoot. I have a web foot. No, no, no. <laughs> When you first do one of these, you imagine that you have to follow the lips of the character on the screen. And I thought I had to match what they were saying. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. But that isn't how it's done. They do us and then they fit it. Animators create the pictures to the actors' voices. It's a lengthy process that requires a lot of attention to detail. Then when it gets back to me, I would go and take one of my drawings and just enlarge it 
and then go in and clean it up for the painter. The painter can go from this and drop in her colors. The animation process ultimately involves working in multiple layers with the newest video painting technology. Um, this is an example of the layering that we do um, in order to put the background together. We start with a black and white drawing like this, and then we lay in the color, not using the line, and then we add texture, we add mist, and we've got this slide in a different layer, and then the foreground element, and that makes up the completed piece. It's interesting, this pen does have the same pressure capabilities as a regular brush, so if I push a little bit harder, I'll get a wider stroke, and if I push a little bit lighter, I'll get a thinner stroke, and I can actually simulate a real paintbrush. You can see right here, what it would look like before, and just punching it up with a few highlights. Then voices, There's no turning back sound now. effects, oh, and music dark, are matched tunnel. to the video. I hate dark, spooky tunnels! And it all comes together in that magical Scooby-Doo kind of way. <laughs> Scooby-Doo and the Monster of Mexico. It's so funny, <laughs> it's a scream. <laughs> You must watch Scooby-Doo. It is my life. It'll be your life. It's a resurgence, and it's only fun, and we all love you. Goodbye. Who are you?